Over the next four videos, we're going to develop this game. We can drag, hit, score points. It shows an animation. And the longer we keep the ball going, the faster it goes. And we lose lives as we miss the ball. And so we've got a game over panel. But before we get into the more complex area of, of this, where it's showing animation and game over and scoring, we're going to start really, really simple. So you understand what's going on. So let's open animate. And you can, if you look in your resources for the Pong folder, there's a SRC folder, a source folder in there. And in there, there are a variety of FLAs. I'm looking at the one that is dash v1. So in there, it's really, really simple. We've just got a ball that we've drawn. So that was just a, a circle made of green using the oval tool. And then a line drawn through it, which we've curved by dragging it around. If you've skipped ahead of the draw section, then I recommend going back and doing the draw section if you wouldn't know how to do how to draw that line. And then we've drawn a rounded rectangle um, and coloured that blue. That's our two movie clips. The ball's a movie clip called ball underscore MC and our bat is a movie clip called bat underscore MC. And that's all we've got. So if we look at our publish settings we're publishing it to the V1 folder and we're looping the timeline and we're centering the stage. But we're not making it responsive, we're not making it grow bigger and smaller. Okay, well let's have a look at the, the version we're talking about. So in order to get this screen on, on screen, I'm using web server for Chrome. I've pointed it at the correct uh, resources folder and I've pressed the web server URL and if I did that I'd be in this folder here and I'm going to press pong and press v1 and nothing happens but if I grab that we can drag it along the stage the ball's not moving yet slowly slowly <laughs> so we're going to look at how we write the code to enable this to happen. Firstly, initially when we when we publish, there will be a pong.html file. We've renamed that as index.html and we've made some small changes to it. We've added a, a game JavaScript file. We've added a game variable and in the handle complete event we've created an instance of a class called game passing in stage and export root as parameters and saving that to the variable game which is a global level variable in this application so let's have a look at our game class in our game constructor remember that's the method that gets called when we create a new instance we are saving the stage and saving the root and calling the init method. The init method just creates some convenient properties of this game class, which is the bat MC and the ball MC, which, as you know, will be found in the root level timeline. And the root level timeline has been passed in as a second parameter to our construct method. We're saving the origin of the bat and the ball so that when we do a new game, we can go back to where they were originally created. And then we're creating this method called press move. Press move will be called as we move along having, having the mouse key down. And it will also work with uh, touch devices. It will only work with touch devices because we've put that line of code in. CreateJS.touch.enable and we've enabled the stage to be a touch device. 
Now what we're doing here, we're getting the x value, but we're making sure that it's in relation to our scale for our stage. Because the stage can be scaled up and down, and on Retina devices, Apple Mac Retina devices, then the scale will be the 2 or 3. And we need to convert our x into a value that is relevant to our game. And then we set the current target of this event that's passed into the press move. So the current target is our bat. And we set the x value of that to the x value we've just created. And by doing that, we have a dragging function. So whenever the press move event is called, it receives an event. The event has a stage X on it. We use the stage X to calculate an X value based on our stages scale. And we set the value of our target, which in this instance is the bat, to be that X value. And that's it. We've also added a little tick event that this happens every time there's a tick. So in other words, every time there's a frame and it calls game update. But at the moment, we're not doing anything with that. So that has set up all the way we need to approach our code. It's created a game class where all our functionality is going to go. We've saved properties of that game class, which is the stage and the root. We've created we've created properties of our game, which are the bat and the ball. We've added a method that is called whenever the uh, mouse is down or a touch is down and it's being moved. So that's stage one of creating our game. Quite simple. Hope you understand it. It's very important that you understand the concepts of the fact that we're putting our functionality into the game class. The game class knows how to get at our stage and our export root. It saved it as a property of the game called root. And it saved little convenience uh, properties that allow us to easily control the bat and the ball. And we're using a method of create.js, which is the event press move to control dragging our bat left and right on our stage. Okay, we're making progress. Let's pause there and I'll see you in a minute. This video was from the course Create HTML5 Games Using Adobe Animate. To get the full course at a great discount, pull down the description and follow the link.